everyone. I'm Kara Minowy. This is Shell Point Today for Monday, November 25th. On today's show, Ann Wharton brings us a real review of tonight's movie presentation, Mr. Roberts. Adrian Kerr discusses the final academy class of the semester, and Rose Donnelly tells us why the employee Christmas gift is so important to her at the holidays. But first, this is Thanksgiving week, which means it's time to make some plans. Yes, you'll watch the Macy's Parade and some football, but it's also a good idea to plan when and where you're enjoying Thanksgiving dinner. All of your options are on page 17 of your Shell Point Life magazine. Also, keep in mind that all Shell Point offices will be closed Thursday, including the medical center and the pharmacy. They will be open for normal business on Friday. Among the other closures on Thanksgiving Day is the gift shop. But while they'll be closed on Thursday, they're actually preparing for the gift shop extravaganza event next week. At this event, you can get Christmas gifts for almost everyone on your list and meet some of the artists and crafters who supply the gifts. We'll even have the social center reserved for free gift wrapping and other festivities. Mark it on your calendar. The gift shop extravaganza happens next Tuesday, December 3rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the gift shop and the social center. Now let's talk about tonight's entertainment. Henry Fonda, James Cagney, William Powell, and Jack Lemmon all in one film. Now that's one you've got to see. It's called Mr. Roberts, and it's playing tonight at 6.45 p.m. in the Social Center on the Island. Ann Wharton has this review. Hello again, I'm Ann Wharton, and welcome to Real Review. For Monday's movie, we'll be showing the 1955 film, Mr. Roberts. The movie, Mr. Roberts, is based on a 1946 novel and 1948 Broadway play of the same name. The action takes place on an American naval cargo ship named the USS Reluctant during World War II. The ship's captain, Lieutenant Commander Morton, is proud of his spotless record supplying the U.S. fleet. Captain Morton is a petty and viciously dictatorial figure. He is played to perfection by James Cagney. We are shown what life is like aboard a bucket the tirelessly traffics between the islands of tedium and apathy with side trips to monotony. The story revolves around the quietly towering figure of this supply vessel's cargo officer, Lieutenant Roberts, who is the essence of understanding. Although Mr. Roberts desperately longs for a berth on a fighting ship, he remains the crew's strong bulwark against the stupidity and the tyranny of the captain. Mr. Roberts has grown tired of his dull duties as cargo officer. He's embarrassed that he's stuck in a tedious job in a safe rear area while other men are risking their lives. So he repeatedly requests a transfer to a unit on the front lines of the Pacific. The captain is aware that Mr. Roberts is responsible for his ship's sterling record, so he consistently refuses to endorse Mr. Roberts' transfer. But by regulation, the captain is forced to forward the letters up the chain of command. Mr. Roberts is consistently denied his request by the admirals. Mr. Roberts becomes increasingly frustrated in his request for a transfer and his letters begin to include descriptions of disharmony aboard the ship, much to the captain's annoyance. Henry Fonda's portrayal of Mr. Roberts is a sensitive characterization full of dignity and power. Mr. Roberts shares quarters with Ensign Frank Pulver, played by Jack Lemmon. Ensign Pulver is an extremely lazy junior officer who's in charge of the laundry and morale. He rarely leaves his quarters, spending most of his time idling in his bunk. Ensign Pulver is intimidated by the captain and avoids him at all costs, so much so that the captain even forgets that Pulver is part of the crew. William Powell plays the ship's doctor. His polished portrayal of the middle-aged doctor is subdued and effective. Jack Lemmon received an Academy Award for his portrayal of Ensign Pulver. I trust that you will all enjoy this hilarious film as much as I do. Mr. Roberts will be shown one time only on Monday, November 25th at 6.45 p.m. in the Social Center on the island. Be sure to get your soda and popcorn and enjoy this wonderful story. See you all at the movies. 
Well, folks, this is the last week of the Academy of Lifelong Learning for 2013. All classes take a break for the month of December, and then a new semester begins in January. All this season, the Academy has focused on the Middle East, and Adrian Kerr has one final Academy class in Middle East history, focusing on the Crusades. But this crusade never actually reached the Holy Land. Find out more about the Fourth Crusade at tomorrow's Academy finale at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room. Terry Kolath has this preview. Hello, I'm here today with Professor Adrian Kerr, and we're talking about his final Tuesday morning history lesson in the Academy this fall. And we're going to talk about the Fourth Crusade. Thank you for joining me, Adrian. Thank you, Terry. It's always a pleasure. The Fourth Crusade, Venice versus Constantinople, 1204, the Year of Shame. The Year of Shame is actually a very good description. It was a book that um, one of the experts on the, this period wrote, um, and it's still a classical book. And th there's hardly a better way to present what took place. Mm -hmm. So if you cast your mind back to the 13th century, you had um, two great Christian powers. Uh -huh. You had the Church of Rome, centered in Rome, of course, and the Pope. He was the leader of the Church of Rome. But you had an equally strong um, alternative form of Christianity, which we could today call the Eastern Orthodox Church, which is split, of course, since those days. But in those days, it covered um, all of the Eastern Christians from Greece through to Egypt. And the Coptic Christians, for instance, are a surviving part of that Byzantium uh, Church of um, Constantinople. And they had um, a patriarch. And this was a patriarch who led the Eastern Church. And there's a patriarch, we call him a pope, of the Western Church. Now, you'd think that they would um, work together to pursue common objectives, wouldn't you think? Well, not the case. And the Church of Rome, the leader, believed that he should be the number one. And he asked the, his opposite number to accept in writing that he worked for the Pope, or he would, the Church of Rome was secondary to the, sorry, the Church of the East was secondary to the Church of Rome. Rome was conducted in Latin. The church in the East was conducted in Greek. So you had a difference of opinions, a difference of language, and difference of styles. And this all boiled over um, until an opportunity arose where the Church of Rome, using the Fourth Crusade as a vehicle, could actually further its case in the East. I won't spoil the story, but they set off from Venice um, with a ragtag army, and the Venetians had built a fleet of um, ships to transfer the Fourth Crusade army to Constantinople, where they'd regroup, and then move on by land or sea to retake Jerusalem. That was the objective. Well, the sad history tells us they didn't get past Constantinople. The people were less in number than they thought. The army was smaller, had less money to pay the Venetians. And so the Venetians were left with a huge debt, which the Christian armies couldn't pay. And it was that um, event which then led to the year of shame. This is going to be fascinating. We won't say any more. Okay. You are welcome to attend Tuesday morning. Please sign up at either service desk to get the rest of the information. This being the final week of November, it's also the final week to donate to the employee Christmas gift. This is the one time of the year when residents are allowed to tangibly demonstrate their gratitude for employees by offering a monetary gift at the holidays. Just drop off your donation at either service desk or contact the finance department to have it automatically donated from your resident account. The deadline to donate is this Friday, so be sure to show your appreciation. One question that we hear about the employee Christmas gift is, how do employees actually use the gift? Some buy gifts for their children, others travel to see family members. Some employees share the wealth by donating to the less fortunate. And some gifts go straight to a practical need, like buying a stove. We asked Rose Donnelly of Resort Services how she has been helped by the employee Christmas gift. My name is Renee Maxwell and I live at Harbor Court. And this year I happen to be, um, have the pleasure of being the chairman of the Employees Christmas Fund. And we have been working on this through the year in many different ways. But now we're getting to the very special part, bring in a lot of good funds for our wonderful employees. And today we're going to meet with one of my good friends, Rose. 
Rose, how long have you worked here? And tell me some of the things, I know many of the things that you do at Shell Point. I see you everywhere. Tell us about that. Well, I've been here at Shell Point uh, seven years, almost seven years, and I hadn't worked for quite a few years, and I was like really surprised that somebody hired me at my age, you know, to come and, you know, like start a career all over again. And I just love it. I, I it, Coming to work every day is just the best thing for me. It's just being with everybody here, the staff, the residents. It's just an amazing family. And what I do here is I work in uh, the Shell Point Performing Arts and I handle all the concerts that go on in our village church and our small venue here at the Grand Cypress. And I do event the program coordinating for the academy and for the auxiliary. So I maintain records for that and I do budgets for those things. And um, I work a lot with um, residents in these things that I do. And it's really, it's really rewarding. I just love it here. I'm sure it is, and I feel the same way because I feel the closeness so often of all of you uh, employees that work with us because there is a bond, and we appreciate that as residents too. We have a good history together, don't we, um, besides being at Shell Point. Uh, I grew up in Chicago, and that's where you're from also, and you happen to be part of the Sisters Order of the Nuns who taught at my high school. And it was really interesting how we met and found that out. We were working on an event in the village church one afternoon, putting pastries together on trays, and we started talking about where we're from and, and all this, and we discovered that Mother Theodore Guerin High School was a common denominator for us. So um, ever since that day, it's been like, it's just a close relationship that we have because of that. And um, it really makes working at Shell Point really awesome. It really does. That's one of the main reasons why I said that I would really help on this committee, and it's been a wonderful challenge. Um, I was wondering, we would like to interview you a little bit and wonder what some of the things that you might be thinking about with doing with your little fun. Well, I can tell you that in the past, I gave it to the um, St. Jude hospital for children because um, financially I was doing well that year and the year after I also gave that money to the Heifer International organization and I got a letter back from the family that received a calf um, in the Philippines who because of my donation they were able to get a calf and start learning how to raise their own animals for food and um, it was really rewarding to do that and um, last year I decided to buy a house and <laughs> I took on this big project and it needed work and so we redid this house the kitchen and that and I needed a new stove so I thought hmm Christmas bonus is coming <laughs> so I went out shopping for my stove even before I bought my actually closed on my house because I knew the house I was buying. So I went out and found my stove and I purchased it. I had them hold it for a month until I can move it into my new house, into my kitchen. But that's where I spent my money for last year's bonus. This year's bonus, I do not know yet what I'm gonna do with it, but um, God's gonna steer me in that direction. So I'll know at the time when I receive it. That's wonderful. That sounds very, very good. And I know you'll find a good use for it, as so many of our other employees will. It's such a special time for them to maybe just do something that they haven't done before or have a little extra cash to be able to touch on something that would mean so much more to someone else. And a lot of our employees do that. Um, I would like to mention to you that uh, you did receive your letters recently and explains our whole process of everything we've been doing through the year. And I know a lot of our residents are just coming back, so we hope that you will help and, and uh, help us build up our a little fund here that we're trying to raise for our employees. We have over 900 employees, and we're hoping that this year we can match what we gave them last year, which was pretty much near $500 a piece. We hope to be able to do that. And one more little boost I'd like to say is I'd really love to make it 100% in giving. No matter what you can give, it doesn't matter. Just so that we could all share in this giving at this very special time. We're going to be collecting our funds certainly through um, November 29th. Uh, and then we're going to be passing out those on the committee. There are five of us. We'll be, have the pleasure of passing out checks to all of our employees the following week on December 6th. So we hope that you will help us in this. And remember, this is the one time each year that we really give back 
to our employees in a very special way to show them how much we appreciate everything they have done for us and constantly do for us in so many ways throughout this year. Thank you and God bless. In keeping with the Thanksgiving season, David Hallenstein is here now with the Thanksgiving-themed episode of Listening to the Words. Welcome to Listening to the Words, where this week we celebrate how thankful we are for food, for friends, for family, and for strangers. One story is about realizing that our spiritual reserve tanks are big enough that we can make it through. Also, turkey preparation, as only humorous Dave Barry can imagine it. Shell Point TV's Adam Brown will shed light in his reading of a story by Hans Christian Andersen. Acts of kindness are explored in stories and poems ranging from when my car broke down, help was there, to kindness for a dementia patient. Now, an important reminder that your Shell Point TV Channel 13 is growing. You have already seen rebroadcasts of village church services, quarterly meetings, and Medicare programs. More informative seminars and entertaining concerts will be joining the exciting Channel 13 lineup. And through it all, you will still be able to hear your favorite stories, poetry, and articles on Listening to the Words in 30-minute programs airing all through every day of the year. You may have to look a little harder to find it, but I'll continue to try to make it worth your while. A new program or a popular encore show starts every Monday. And if you miss the program some week, you can always pick it up on the Listening to the Words webpage. That's at www.shellpoint.net slash listening. This is your reader host, David Howenstein, wishing you Happy Thanksgiving. Welcome to the Happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley, and this is Leslie Brand, and we're going to go over the activities that we offer here at Shell Point today. We're going to start out this morning at 9 o'clock. We have men's match play doubles tennis down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. Then we'll move to 915, where billiards will be at the Resident Activity Center. Also at 9.15, we have pottery with instruction available down in the pottery studio. One more 9.15 activity, we have virtual bowling. That'll also be in the resident activity center. At 10 o'clock, the Suzy Q will go to Matanzas for lunch. Sign up is required for that trip. At 10.30, the Disciple Men's Bible Study Group will be in the game room at the Woodlands. At 10.45, the table tennis game will be going on. This will be a clinic, actually, down in the Tarpon Room. Then we have an 11.30 Health Connections class, Agility and Flexibility. That is in the health club. Currently, that is full. That's the morning lineup. Here's Leslie to tell you about the afternoon. Thank you, Bev. At 12 o'clock, we have Mahjong in the Sable Room at the Woodlands. At 1 o'clock is a Health Connections Balanced Basics Assisted Living in Community Room at the King's Crown, but it is closed. 1.15, we have the Astronomy Group in the Manatee Room. 1.15 is Scrabble in the Library Lounge. 1.15 is Table Tennis in the Tarpon Room. And the last 1.15 is Tone Chimes in the Osprey Room. 1.30 is the Model Train Room in the Train Room. It goes until 3.30. 145 is Health Connections, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1 in the Health Club. That is closed. 2 o'clock is the BDI Bead Club in the Oak Room at the Woodlands. 3 o'clock we have a Health Connections, the Pilates Stretch in the Health Club. 315 is the Shell Point Singers Rehearsal in the Choir Room. 630 we have Beginner Square Dancing at the Health Club on the Island. Also at 6.30 is the duplicate bridge in the game room at the Woodlands. 6.45, don't miss movie night. It's Mr. Roberts, 1955, in the social center on the island. Thank you for tuning in with us today, and we hope you have a fabulous Monday. Hi, I'm Terry Colath with your Academy information for Monday. At 10.15, the Anatomy of Words concludes in the Buttonwood Room of the Woodlands, and all are welcome. At 10.15, we have a security password protection. 
class taking place in the Manatee Room of the island, and sign-up is required. Tomorrow, our new class is the Fourth Crusade, Venice versus Constantinople, with Professor Adrian Kerr. Menus for Monday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is chicken parmesan with angel hair and broccoli. For dinner, the special is the home cooking night for nine ninety five, and the soup of the day is Senate bean. In the Allen Cafe for lunch on Monday, enjoy a meat lover scramble with home fries for seven twenty five. The dinner special is Caribbean barbecue flank steak with mac and cheese and kernel corn for eight twenty five, and the Palm Grill is closed on Mondays. All menus are available twenty four hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm David Pavey, administrator of the Alpha Course, which is being offered at Shell Point for the 11th consecutive year. It will run every Tuesday evening from January 14 to March 11, and one Saturday morning, March 1st. Over 18 million people in 169 countries have found answers to many of life's big questions, by taking the Alpha Course, which is offered by every major U.S. denomination in all 50 states. The course originated in 1977 in Holy Trinity Brompton Church, an Anglican parish church in London. It was in response to young people who were asking, is there more to life than this? The Alpha Course presents the basics of the Christian faith. Some people went to Sunday school as children but drifted away from the church and in this season of life appreciate a refresher course. Others have attended church on and off but would appreciate a review of the basics. Subjects we consider include why did Jesus die? How can we have faith? Why and how should I pray? Why and how should I read the Bible? Who's the Holy Spirit? There are three phases to a typical Alpha evening. Each session begins with a Palm Grill catered dinner served in the Grand Cypress Room. It's followed by a video lecture and finally a small group discussion. We begin at 4.30 p.m. and end at 6.45 p.m. sharp. The course is free to participants. An Anglican vicar, Nicky Gumbel, gives the video lectures. The atheistic son of a Jewish refugee from Nazi Germany, Nicky studied at both Oxford and Cambridge, becoming a trial lawyer. But when a friend challenged him to read the Bible, he couldn't put it down. Nicky later gave up law to offer grace, becoming a pastor and majoring in the Alpha Course. His humor and clarity of expression, coupled with a low-key presentation style, make the fast-moving talks the focus of each evening and a natural lead-in to small group discussions. Alpha focuses on discovery rather than dogma. There are no dumb questions. As people share experiences and opinions, new friendships form. We learn from each other. So are you someone who doesn't attend church but is seeking spiritual answers? Are you uncertain of your beliefs and open to growing in the faith? Then Alpha is for you. Why not come and join us? You can register today by calling the Village Church at 454-2147. Do it by all means before the end of December. Space is limited, so it fills up quickly. Do come and join us. You'll be glad you did. And thank you for tuning in to Village Church Connections. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as we explore the many culinary sides of Thanksgiving, from custom-made dishes in the crystal room to growing 900-pound pumpkins. We even have a recipe for an impossible pumpkin pie. It's all on tomorrow's show. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Monday, November 25th. I'm Kara Minowie. From all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.